They proposed closing an area to lobster fishing, protecting what they saw as a nursery area. This eventually became one of the first marine protected areas in Canada. What we tried to do was to try to show people that closed areas can work and, uh, and I always firmly believe what I said in the past is that closed areas will sell itself to the fishing industry. And I think now with our closed areas here on the Eastport Peninsula, uh, the amount of uh, yeah, yeah. size of lobsters within our closed areas, the size of the spawning females within our closed areas, and also with some spillover effect from these, I think the closed area itself has certainly sold itself here to the fishing industry. On the south coast, harvesters also embraced stewardship and lobster conservation. Every time we pick up a, a large female spiny lobster, and she's full of eggs, and you take her and you notch her tail, and you put her back in the water. Next year you get her, and you get her because it's like a garden, so next year you're gonna get her again. And next year when you take her back and she gets in your pot and you take her out, and her notch is a little tiny bit grown over now, but there's no eggs anymore. So you know those eggs are grown into little small lobsters. And they're in the ocean, and they're gonna grow, and they're gonna to contribute to that resource. The idea of conservation, shared stewardship, and a relationship based on respect was also gaining momentum in the north. Crab harvesters in the fishing area 2J were concerned about the future of the crab stocks. They believed action was needed. When we found our stocks was going low, we knew we had to do something to try to uh, stabilize. So we, uh, we've been after uh, DFO for a while to uh, get the Hawks Channel closed because we figured it's a nursery, it's a real breeding ground for crab and other species as well. Harvesters lobbied to have the area of the Hawk Channel closed to all fishing except crab. They believed this area was an important nursery and an area prone to soft shell crab. You can almost see through it. There's one in my right hand is a noose. They proposed a box around the channel eliminating shrimp dragging and gill netting in the turbot fishery. Closing an area to fishing is no easy task, but the harvesters of 2J were successful. So we thought to get the, the bigger box, and we, we did get the, the, the Hawks Channel mostly closed, and we, we're very proud of that. We're hoping to be able to build that stock back up this is uh, hard for us in the, in the short term, but we're hoping that it's going to work in the long term. You know. A few years ago, you was mostly told what to do, but uh, we've, we've talked more and got together, and uh, I think things is working much better. The crab harvesters of Conception Bay fought to be co-managers of the inshore crab resource. We look after it and that's where we live or die. So if I want to stay here and if I want to uh, have a future here, as a fisherman personally and as a group, uh, we have to uh, care for the resource because it's now ours. Something goes wrong, you know, uh, no, no finger pointing and saying those guys did it. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, if we do it right, we reap the benefits. If we do it wrong, we're going to have to suffer the consequences. Sometimes this means recommending tough decisions, like closing areas to fishing because of soft shell. But the involvement of harvesters in the management of the resource means these decisions are accepted differently than they would have been several years ago. A lot of what science was shown and the logbooks were shown when we were saying. So we had a really high decision to make and uh, one that the committee you know, uh, uh, had committed 
two down and the fisherman said, you know, when the good times are there we'll take the good and when the bad time comes we'll take our lumps. And that year we took a big lump. We took a quarter cut of 5,000 pound, a 25% quarter cut. In Placentia Bay, harvesters are participating in a lobster program and are hopeful their efforts will result in a more abundant stock. For now, they are collecting and recording data from modified lobster pots. This is a female spirit, see? Now, this is a, no problem, see, if we notch on this one. Now, even this eggs with nanner, clean lobster, I have to release her. She is a, a V notch lobster, right? This V notch would not her now, I'd be not to myself, right? To release her. No, that was very important for us because the uh, small community, raw community. I mean, if not, he'll die, he'll. Along with fishery dying, I mean, the community dying. Harvesters throughout the province are taking control of their future. They are insisting on being equal partners in the conservation and management of fisheries resources. They are taking ownership of their role as stewards of the resource. The FFAW-CAW has been active in advancing the involvement of harvesters in the resource management decisions. Today, the union is heavily involved in various aspects of fishery science, stock assessment and stewardship focused programs, from the Cod Sentinel program to lobster conservation to crab surveys. Recently we took our involvement a step further through the fishery stewardship program which got its start in Placentia Bay. The goal is to expand the stewardship program throughout the province. Harvesters are clear about what they expect and what shared stewardship means. The bottom line is respect, the foundation to building the alliance needed for shared stewardship to work. DFO also is committed to working with harvesters. They have the people, they have the experience and they have the vessels to be able to conduct this work that we don't have. Uh, it's also important, I think, uh, from a perspective of, of working together with our department. I think uh, they are dependent upon the resource, they are the stakeholders, and so I think they have the right to be involved in the assessment of the status of this resource. I think seeing their data on the table and helping us to interpret it will increase the confidence that they have and that we all have in the decisions that are being made. If we make good decisions, we share the credit. If we don't make good decisions, then we share the accountability for that. The only way to incorporate fishermen's knowledge into, uh, into the management of a fishery is to have fishermen part of the decision-making process. Therefore, by being at the table, then a fisherman's knowledge is at the table then, and that's the only way to do it. Um, we've started working with science in terms of the designing surveys, for instance, the crab survey, and by, uh, by having fishermen uh, do these surveys uh, uh, and using their knowledge in putting that survey together, what that fostered is a better working relationship and more respect even between the fishermen and the science. That's about trying to use a resource, uh, yes, for this generation, for the communities today, but you have to look at the future of a community. It doesn't lie in just what you do today, but what you leave for the next generation. The fishery is what settled rural Newfoundland, and uh, if, if, like, if we don't have a fishery, these these communities here, they'll be ghost towns in in, in, in the future. The devastation of the moratorium remains with the people of the fishery. Perhaps it is these mistakes of the past, the shared pain, the continued impact of the closures, that make it all the more crucial that this time we get it right. After all, rural Newfoundland and Labrador is depending on it.